Hi everyone, my name is Nisa Nickerson. I live in a heavily wooded area of Northern Virginia where there is a sizable population of infected deer ticks. Because I have found ticks on my dogs, my young daughters, and myself, I have done an extensive amount of research on the topic of Lyme disease. I'm going to talk to you now about the etiology of Lyme as well as the reservoir hosts who carry and help spread this disease. What is Lyme disease? Lyme disease is a bacteria caused by tick-borne spirochete that belong to the Borrelia burgdorferi sensu lato geno group. There are three different species, Borrelia burgdorferi sensu stricto, which is in North America and Western Europe, Borrelia afzili, which is in Western Europe, Central Europe, and Russia, and Borrelia guarini, which is in Europe, Russia, and Northern Asia. For the purposes of this presentation, we will focus on Borrelia burgdorferi. Borrelia burgdorferi produces a weak gram-negative stain. Because of this, it is sometimes considered to be neither gram-positive or gram-negative. Since the bacterium has an outer membrane, an inner membrane, and a layer of peptidoglycan, it is generally considered gram-negative. Borrelia burgdorferi is most commonly known to have a spirochete or helical-shaped form, as shown in the top right. Recent research has shown that it can also morph into other forms, including granular, which are smaller units of the spirochete, round body, which is the cystic form, L-form, which has no cell walls, as well as form biofilms, or colonies, which is pictured at the bottom right. The Borrelia burgdorferi spirochete moves in a corkscrew fashion, which enables it to penetrate into host tissue like a screw. This motility is key for the bacterium to evade the body's immune response. Periplasmic flagella, or axial filaments, are attached inside the periplasm near the ends of the cell between the inner and outer cell membrane, as shown at the bottom right. When the filaments rotate, the spirochete is propelled forward in a spiral motion, as pictured at the top right. Carrier reservoirs for Borrelia burgdorferi carry the bacterium, but are unaffected by it. White-footed mice and white-tailed deer are the main carrier reservoirs. Birds and other small mammals can also act as carriers. Dogs, horses, and of course humans are all susceptible to infection. I will now turn the presentation over to Anna Cotton. Anna? Thank you, Misa. Hello, everyone. I am Anna Cotton. Uh, many people who contract Lyme disease initially get misdiagnosed because many of the signs and symptoms are similar to those of multiple chronic illnesses. Knowing what to look for can help in receiving an early proper diagnosis, treatment, and hopefully cure. These are the early signs and symptoms that an affected person may present within 3 to 30 days. 70 to 80 percent of people infected with Lyme disease will develop a rash called erythema migrans, or EM for short, where the tick had attached. Often it will develop into what's referred to as the classic bullseye rash. The rash may be warm to the touch, but generally does not hurt or itch. It expands over a period of days and can grow to be 12 inches in diameter larger. Multiple rashes may appear anywhere on the body. A fever and swollen lymph nodes may be present. These are all signs that can be verified by a doctor. The person may also describe symptoms of fatigue, chills, muscle, and joint aches. If not treated in the early stages, the signs and symptoms of the illness become more severe. Inflammation to the brain and spinal cord may develop and arthritis with swelling, particularly in the knees and other large joints. A condition called Bell's palsy, which is manifested by the loss of facial muscle tone, may develop as well as heart palpitations or irregular heartbeats. After four to six weeks, a blood test will most likely come back positive for antibodies. 
At this stage, an infected person may describe symptoms such as pain in tendons, nerves, muscles and bones, numbness or tingling in hands and feet, severe joint pain, severe headaches, and shortness of breath. They may also have trouble with short-term memory and experience dizziness. 10 to 20% of those who have been treated with antibiotics experience lingering symptoms of fatigue, joint pain, and body aches that may last for six months or more after the end of treatment. This is referred to as post-treatment Lyme disease syndrome. Misa in our group was bitten by an infected tick in May of last year. She was treated with antibiotics, but unfortunately she is experiencing some of these symptoms. The symptoms will generally improve over time and we certainly hope that this will happen very soon for MISA. When Lyme disease is left completely untreated, it can cause long-term damage to the nervous system and joints of the body. If left untreated during a pregnancy, it can lead to an infection of the placenta and could put the baby's life at great risk. Now I will hand the mic over to Shaney Murphy, who will tell us about transmission and treatment. Shaney, take it away. Thank you, Anna. Hello, everyone. My name is Shaney Murphy. Um, Lyme disease is a disease most commonly spread to humans through the bite of an infected tick, and with proper treatment and prevention techniques, the disease can be avoided. Lyme disease is transmitted to humans through the bite of an infected deer or black-legged tick. Ticks become carriers of the bacterium when they feed on small animals like mice that are already infected. Ticks attach to their hosts by grasping the skin and cutting the surface. Once they cut into the skin, they insert their feeding tube and cement-like fluid to stay in place. Most ticks secrete a small amount of saliva with anesthetic properties so the host doesn't feel it. This process can take from 10 minutes to 2 hours depending on the tick's maturity. During this process, if the tick is infected with Lyme disease, it can easily transmit the disease to the host. If the tick is removed within 24 hours, it can greatly reduce the chances of the disease being transmitted. Most humans are infected by the bite of nymphs. Nymphs are immature ticks and are small, often less than two millimeters, and are very hard to see. Adult ticks can transmit the disease too, but are much easier to detect. There is some evidence that Lyme disease may be spread from human to human through blood and bodily fluids, but there's still more to be researched. This pictured diagram explains the life cycle of a tick and how they transmit Lyme disease. The life cycle typically requires two years to complete. First, the adult tick feeds on and mates on large animals, usually deer, in the fall and early spring. Then the female tick drops off those animals to lay eggs on the ground. By summer, the eggs hatch into larvae. Larvae then feed on mice and other small mammals and birds in the summer and early fall. During the spring, they molt into nymphs. Nymphs then feed on small rodents and other small mammals and birds in the late spring and summer and molt into adults in the fall, completing the two-year cycle. Larvae and nymphs typically become infected with Lyme disease bacteria when they feed on infected small animals, particularly the white-footed mouse. The bacteria remain in the tick as it changes from larvae to nymph or from nymph to adult. Infected nymphs or adult ticks then bite and transmit Lyme disease bacteria to their host. Treatment with appropriate antibiotics in the early stages of Lyme disease usually lead to a rapid and complete recovery. Treatment usually lasts from two weeks to a month. Some antibiotics commonly used for the treatment are doxycycline, amoxicillin, cefiroxamine, acetyl, and ceftriaxone. Doxycycline is the main antibiotic prescribed for treatment. For prevention, overall avoiding direct contact with ticks, um, using repellent with DEET and permethrin, searching for and removing ticks from your body if any are found or you suspect they could be there. When removing ticks, the best way is to, find, is to use fine tip tweezers to rest the tick as close to the skin's surface as possible and then pull upwards steadily with even pressure. If any mouth parts are left behind, be sure to remove those too so they do not remain in the skin. The next thing to do would be to cover up with clothes well, wearing long sleeves and long pants when needed. 
Shani, thank you for your great presentation. It was excellent. Hi, my name is Mary Mays, and I'm here to share with you today 17 interesting facts about Lyme disease. In 1975, Lyme disease was first recognized after a large group of children were diagnosed with juvenile rheumatoid arthritis. Researchers realized the connection between deer ticks and the disease. Lyme disease was named after the town in which it was discovered, Lyme, Connecticut. In 1977, Dr. Alan Stern clinically described Lyme disease. Lyme disease is now the leading cause of vector-borne infection illness in the United States. Ticks can carry many different types of bacterial, viral, or parasitical infections, referred to as co-infections. Children are at the highest risk of contracting Lyme and are more to central nervous system infections. Lyme disease has been reported in every state except Hawaii. Lyme disease can affect any part of the body system and of organs. Lyme disease can lead to neurological, cardiac, psychiatric, and arthritis symptoms. Birds play an important role in spreading ticks around the world. One, Dr. Willow Burdenderf discovered sporadic that caused Lyme disease, which was named Borilla Burdenderf in his honor. Lyme disease have six times more new cases than HIV or AIDS, yet it receives less than 15% funding. Lyme disease infects 3,000 people a year, 10 times more Americans than previously reported. Up to 50% of ticks and Lyme endemic areas are infected. The ELSA screening test is unreliable. The ELSI test that you receive at your doctor's office misses 35% of the culture proven Lyme disease. Ticks numb you before biting. You may not find one unless someone sees it. Ticks follow your breath and track you down. A nip is about the size of a sesame seed or pencil tip. When you find a tick that is still flat and tiny and not engulfed with blood, it has not transmitted Lyme disease. Hi everyone, it's Misa again. While doing my research, I came across this hashtag Lyme disease challenge. It's a social media campaign to raise awareness for Lyme disease. The participants are asked to snap a picture or take a video of themselves taking a bite out of a slice of Lyme. Our group has decided to participate. We challenge everyone watching to take the hashtag Lyme Disease Challenge to raise awareness for Lyme disease. Visit www.lymedisease-challenge.org for details. Thank you for watching and don't forget to check yourself for ticks when you visit wooded areas.